uh, here I want to review uh, the gravitational potential energy and also add one thing to what we, we have learned so far. So uh, if you remember, whenever we have a mass close to the Earth, uh, the potential energy of it is going to be mgh, and h is going to be the height from a reference line. And you're allowed to put your reference line anywhere you want, here, here, at the top. It doesn't really matter. As far as um, the distance of your mass from the uh, surface of the Earth is um, negligible comparing to the radius of the Earth, you can put your potential uh, reference at any point you want. So if you put it here, then the potential energy of this mass is going to be mgh, and h is this height. And if your mass is below this reference line, then the potential energy is going to be negative. <clears throat> so it totally depends to where you are putting your reference line. Um, the actual number of the potential energy it doesn't really matter, but the change in the potential energy is something which is important in our equations. Now, if, um, if uh, the distance of your object from the surface of the Earth is um, changing, or is it or if it's already far away from the surface of the Earth, then this equation is not going to work. We have another equation for it which I'm not going to prove it for you, but you can take a look at your book. And I assume you had this in your physics. So if you have an object with the mass of m, and let's say the distance of it from the center of the Earth is small r, and the radius of the Earth is capital R, then the potential energy of this mass is going to be different than this because in this equation g is constant when you are moving object up and down slightly comparing to the radius of the earth g is not going to really change but if your mass is far away from the center of the earth comparing to the radius of the earth then g is going to change and um, u the potential energy for this one is going to be negative mg um, r squared divided by small r, while g is uh, the gravitational acceleration on the surface of the Earth, 9.81, and r is, capital R is the radius of the Earth, and small r is the distance from the center of the Earth. And the meaning of this potential energy is how much we work we need to put in our system to bring this mass from infinity to this distance from the center of the Earth. So obviously, when you put your mass far away from the Earth, because of gravitational force, it's going to move toward the Earth, right? You don't need to put any force. But if you want to move it with, uh, with a constant speed, a very small speed from infinity to here, actually, you need to put force away from the Earth, right, to keep it to falling down or keep it from accelerating. And because of that, uh, that potential energy is going to be negative or that work that you need to put to your system, to this mass, to move it slowly toward the Earth from infinity to this point. That's the physical meaning of it. So this is going to be the equations. This is going to be the equation that uh, when your mass is far away from the center of the Earth. And, uh, Another topic that I'm going to cover in this video is, uh, is power. Which again, you had this in your physics, but I'm going to just review it. Um, power is energy per time. How much energy you are putting to your system over time. So, um, we usually define it by uh, dw or du, your work, divided by dt. This is instantaneous power. The average power is going to be 
the average force that you are putting in your system or energy you are putting in your system divided by delta t, the total time, right? And um, if you remember work, the definition of the work is f dot dr. We had this in previous um, sessions divided by dt. And dr dt is velocity. So if you have a mass that you are applying a force to it, like F, and this mass is moving, for example, from here to here over the time, from point one to point two, then the power of this force is gonna be F times dr dt. Let's say this change in the position is very small, it is dr. And this displacement is happening in a short time of dt. Then the power is gonna be f dot uh, dr over dt, or velocity. Right. So this is gonna be f dot product times the velocity of the movement, okay? And um, the other definition Uh, which you already know that is efficiency efficiency which we usually show it with e is how much power you are getting from um, your system to how much power you are putting to your system so the definition of it is going to be p out divided by p in which usually is less than one unless your um, system is perfect. So uh, if, if in your system you are putting some energy to it, some of the energy is gonna, uh, is gonna disappear as a heat or sound or noise. Uh, and uh, the power you are getting from your system is gonna be smaller than how much power you are putting to your system. And because of that, it is gonna be small. And um, the loss of energy can happen for different reasons. It, it could be for mechanical losses, for example, if you have friction in your system, or thermal, if uh, your machine or your system uh, heating up, you are losing some energy for that, right? So um, if you have a couple of different ways to lose your uh, energy, the efficiency is gonna be multiplication of all of those efficiencies, thermal efficiency, mechanical efficiency, or even electrical efficiency. So if your system, for example, 80% efficient electric, uh, uh, in, in the electrical part of it, 90% uh, in the mechanical part of it, and 95% in the uh, thermal part of it, you need to multiply all of these efficiencies to find the total efficiency of your system. So E in general is gonna be uh, mechanical efficiency times um, electrical efficiency times thermal efficiency. So we need to multiply all of them together. Okay, um, I'm gonna solve two problems using some of these equations to see how they work. Uh, let's start with this one. Uh, the first problem is this one. In this problem, we have this man, which is riding this bicycle, and uh, it is going up of this uh, incline with the constant velocity of 50 miles per hour. And uh, we want to see uh, how much the energy of the system is changing per time. Or, in other words, as the problem states, uh, what power P if the uh, is the man uh, developing in riding this incline, which means how much the potential energy of the system is increasing per time. Or in other words is uh, how much power this man is consuming or putting the, to the system to ride with this, uh, with this velocity, okay? So uh, uh, also the incline, um, 
uh, it says it is 5% grade, which means the slope of this line is 5%. Or in other words, it, uh, the tangent of this angle is 5%. So whenever uh, tangent of an slope, tangent of a slope is less than 6% usually, you can say the angle in radian is equal to the tangent of that angle is equal to the sine of that angle. It is fairly accurate. But if you want to be um, very precise, you can actually find this angle. Tangent of theta is given 5% and from there you can find theta, which is going to be tangent inverse of 5%. And if you calculate it, you can see it is very, very close to 5% um, radian. Uh, okay, so after finding this angle, now we need to uh, see um, the power of this gravitational force or how much power this guy is putting to the system to increase this potential force. Okay, uh, the only uh, force that we have here, which is, uh, which is doing work, is mg. Okay. And um, to calculate the power of it, uh, we need to dot product that force to the velocity of it, which means we need to calculate, we need to find the component of the velocity in the y direction and then multiply to the mg. That's going to be the power of the system, which is increasing. And if you if you uh, don't consider, um, if you don't consider the absolute value of it, it means how much this guy is losing power. If you consider the absolute value of it, it means how much the system is increasing or the, the power of the system, how much the potential energy of the system is increasing per time. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, the absolute value. So uh, F is uh, mg, which is in the vertical direction. Then if I want to multiply to, if I want to dot product it to the velocity, I need to multiply to the velocity, then cosine of the angle between them. And the angle between these two vectors is pi over 2 plus theta. So I need to multiply to the cosine of pi over 2 plus theta. And if you put the numbers and turn the velocity from miles per hour to uh, foot per second, we need to multiply to 5280 because each mile is 5280 foot. And then divide it to an hour, which is 3600 seconds. To multiply to this uh, cosine of that angle, which is going to be 220 uh, uh, pound uh, foot per second. And if you divide this to uh, 550, you can change the unit from this to uh, to horsepower. So it is going to be 220 divided by 550 horsepower or point four. So this is gonna be uh, the power that this man is developing by riding this bicycle. Okay. Another example. Um, to use the definition of potential energy gravitational potential energy for the masses far away from the Earth. Problem 398. Uh, this problem says we have this mass, this projectile, which we are launching it from the surface of the Earth upward. The initial velocity is given V0. And um, actually, uh, um, the initial velocity is the problem. Uh, we are launching it with initial velocity of V0, which is unknown. And the question is, if uh, after launching this particle, it goes up uh, to the altitude of R divided by 2, R is the radius of the Earth, then by neglecting all the uh, aerodynamical f uh, drag forces, then the question is, with what velocity we need to launch this up? What is V0? So uh, initially it is here, and finally it's gonna go somewhere here, and the velocity at this point is gonna be equal to zero. Let's say this is point two. Uh, we wanna find the required velocity, the required in initial, veloc uh, initial velocity, okay? 
So again, uh, I'll pause this video, video and uh, think about this problem for a few minutes, then see the rest of the video. Uh, because there is no energy loss in between, the energy at the beginning is going to be equal to the energy at the end, right? So the kinetic energy at the beginning plus potential energy at the beginning is going to be equal to kinetic energy at the end plus potential energy at the end. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to show it with V. <clears throat> so uh, the kinetic energy at the beginning is one half of m uh, v zero squared because that's that is the velocity, and the potential energy at the beginning because in this process uh, the object is moving far away from the center of the Earth, or the displacement is comparable to the radius of the Earth. We cannot put a reference line here and say the potential energy is equal to zero. We have to use the equation that uh, I showed you at the beginning of this video. <clears throat> so um, based on that equation, the potential energy is uh, minus mg r squared divided by r, which is the distance from the center of the Earth, which at the beginning is just r. And in the second point, um, at this point, uh, the kinetic energy is equal to zero because it's gonna stop here. But the potential energy is gonna be negative mg r squared divided by small r, which means the distance from the center of the earth, which is gonna be r plus half of r, okay? So um, uh, if I simplify this equation, r is gonna cancel out with r squared and also this one, and m is gonna cancel out from both side of this uh, equation. And if you um, take this to the other side and do the math, multiply both sides to two, at the end, we are going to find V0. V0 is going to be square root of 2GR divided by 3. And again, G is 9.81 in general. But it says uh, this is happening in North Pole. So if you look at the tables at the end of your book um, or chapter 1, there are some tables in the chapter one, you can find it over there too. G in the North Pole is 9.825. It's a little bit different than 9.81. So it's gonna be square root of two times 9.825 times the radius of the Earth, which is um, uh, 60, 71 times 10 to the 3 meter divided by 3. And at the end, V0 is going to be 64, 60, 3, 64 60 meter per second.